progress, upgrades, raw power. These ideals are what have got us so far in the way of technology. The art of modification is what has advanced us as a species. You can modify things in most aspects of life. It's truly a great skill. Why modify things, you might ask? Well, modification tends to fall under four different reasons. Modifying for ease of use or inert use. This is commonly used when someone physically can't use something without modification. The second reason is a general design improvement, which usually involves increasing speed, power, or efficiency. This is probably the most common of the four reasons. The third reason is purely cosmetic. This Nerf blaster is an example because I repainted part of it orange and used some stencils. The fourth reason is mending. This usually involves using materials that aren't designed for the purpose. This is commonly referred to as jury rigging. Whether it's altering a piece of clothing, making more levels for your favorite video game, um, or just simply fixing a broken hinge on a door with some spare parts from a cabinet. This knowledge will serve you well. One of the best ways you can nurture this is to take something you love um, and see what you could do to improve it. Take, for instance, my personal hobby, Nerf, or Nerfing, as it's commonly known. You may have noticed that I'm wearing some rather outlandish clothing today. This is because it is useful for carrying extra Nerf darts and magazines when playing Nerf. Most of it I have hand sewn. Yes. Us in the nerfing community have modified nerf blasters for as long as nerf blasters have existed. The first mods were quite primitive and potentially dangerous. For example, people used to place pennies behind their blaster springs to make them use more of their stored energy. Now the problem with this is that after having the pennies in for a few weeks or a month, the spring will become fatigued and become partially, uh, permanently partially compressed. Although by far the most worrying of the early modifications were the modified air tanks. Their intended purpose was to store air at a higher um, pressure so that releasing the air would send the nerf dart further. They were usually air tanks from unmodified blasters that had all their valves plugs plugged, including, including the over-release valve, which is there to stop the tank from exploding due to high pressure. These, these tanks were then covered in PVC piping to increase strength. Never do this! <laughs> because of the tank ruptures, the PVC fragments will fly out at high speed, not unlike a fragmentation grenade. This can cause severe injury. As for the more safe and modern modifications, we have some more sensible things like spring replacements or rewiring of electrical blasters. This, the purpose of spring replacements is to increase, improve power and the purpose of rewiring is to improve rate of fire as well as power by replacing the battery with a stronger one. In order to do this, you need to replace the wires and motors because if you didn't, they would melt to the really, due to the very powerful battery. Some people have gone even farther with mine, not even using existing blasters as a base anymore. These blasters are called homemades. These blasters are commonly made out of PVC, polycarbonate, and 3D printed material. then assembled with metal hardware. They are usually more powerful than their counterparts, modded or unmodded. These are truly the pinnacle of modding um, because they are not just improving upon a pre-existing blaster, uh, they are creating something new that can be more powerful and more tailored to specific needs within the nerfing scene. These are still considered modifications uh, because although they aren't modifying an existing blaster, they are modifying the design of existing blasters. One extremely popular example is Captain Slug's Cowboy. Oh. This particular caliber has had a scope, foregrip, and magazine uh, attachment. The genius behind the caliber is that it's all open source, so, uh, and most of the parts are 3D printed. So if you don't like something, you can just download the file and alter it yourself. This is what I hope to create. A blaster design that can be modified freely and easily with just a few clicks of a mouse. So I got to designing. First the maglock, then the bolt, plunger assembly, and then lastly the front end grip. It's called the BT bolt. It hasn't been tested yet, but un uh, unfortunately, but it should. It uses a 6 inch K26 spring for propulsion. For reference, a caliber with 11 inches of K26 spring in it launches a nerf dart on a, at on average 200 feet per second. 
Whereas your standard off-the-shelf Nerf blaster launches a Nerf dart at between 50 and 100 feet per second. Jeez. The BT bolt is designed to use full or half-length Nerf darts with standard Nerf magazines or third-party magazines such as Jet Blaster's Katana clip system. I designed the BT bolt to be assembled easily, seeing as all you need is a magazine, a 3D printed parts, a strong glue, a strong elastic band, and six inches of K26 or K25 string. To assemble, simply glue all the parts together in the correct configuration, and I'll put the hardware in as needed during the assembly process. This was just my form of attempting to improve something I liked. Now for you, it might be something completely different. It's our duty to make the world the way we want it, um, so go out there and improve your world in any way you see fit. Um, the world's made up of small people like us, and by improving the little things, we can change the world for the better. So like my mother always says, get excited and make things. Thank you.